Next question is from Will B. Will. Would you alter your advice for aspiring trainers to start their career in a big box gym due to industry changes caused by the coronavirus? Mm-hmm. What a what a weird time to get into the <sighs> I know the fitness space um, because of what's going on. I, okay, so when things kind of get, and I I do believe at some point we're going to see things look more like they used to. I still think going to a big box gym is the way to start as a trainer. You're going to have the most opportunities to work with the most amount of people to make the to learn the most to become the best communicator uh, to be able to train the most amount of people or whatever the big box gyms are the place to do it they provide you with so many tools with the equipment they provide you with all the marketing and the most practice you're gonna it's get the there. most practice mm-hmm. it's the best place to go right now boy I don't know I don't know what that looks like um, things are are kind of weird and up in the air I would say, you know, and I think this is probably something you're going to have to do anyway in the future is to learn how to build some kind of a virtual uh, component to your business, either to complement personal training hmm. or that becomes the business, your business itself. But, um, but yeah, it's a bit of a weird time. I don't even know if gyms are even hiring I at know. the moment. You know? I don't know because, uh, I mean, my thoughts initially, because I would always refer people to a big box gym, because like you guys said, I mean, it's the most uh, volume you're going to experience. And you can also watch other trainers and how they deal with uh, all of their clients and, and what they're doing, uh, which is invaluable. So on, on that lines, like I I had also been a big proponent of, of finding somebody you really respect uh, that, you know, has a gym that's still of, you know, around and thriving and, and has more of a niche, uh, focus to it and become, uh, an, an apprenticeship, figure out something where you could, uh, or, or just shadow them and, and, uh, you know, you know, offer to, uh, sort of be an apprentice, uh, and, and learn as much as you can just kind of shadowing what they do. But I don't really know, like, again, the landscape has totally changed. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that some of the more specialized gyms are probably going to be, yeah you know, survive more so, but, uh, I still think that the, the, the big box gym is the, is the place for someone to start. Even if, uh, you know, 50% of them close down and rates go up and traffic is down significantly, it still, it still will be the, the best place to get the most practice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also one of the best places to be for an aspiring (laughs) business, uh, you know, builder. I mean, if you're going to go, I mean, much of, my business education came from working for a a you know billion dollar company uh, and observing you know observing the systems that they had in place and how they navigated tough times like this so <clears throat> you know uh, if any i don't think that mark mastroff is going to go broke from this situation by any means regardless of how bad he gets hit or has to close down facilities he will figure it out right and if you have an opportunity to work for a leader like that and work in their one of their facilities, a great opportunity to learn, you know, on many levels, aside from just the amount of repetitions that you're going to get because of the, the volume of traffic, but also just watching somebody at that level that has had success operate their business. So I still would steer somebody in that direction. Now, the only way I would I would go kind of like towards what Justin was alluding to, or I, I do see a lot of value in that. You know, if I if I'm somebody who has another career and I, I make an income already and I don't need to generate revenue right away, and it's just not a bad idea to go intern for somebody or work for free for a, a great fitness leader that you have an opportunity to be around. I mean, uh, Enzo was someone who took advantage of us like that, right? He saw an opportunity to come in, provide a service. I don't mean take advantage like in a bad way. I mean like he took advantage of a great opportunity, right? He saw that you know these guys I look up to in fitness I'm curious about this space I'm going to come offer my services for free to to pick their brand and that's exactly what he did he came in and learned a ton and I think there's a lot of that and the kid wasn't in need of money so it wasn't like a negotiation mm-hmm. of I need to make x amount of dollars he was purely here to get the experience and if you're in a situation like that I think there's a tremendous amount of value to go offer your services for free to shadow people that you think are very talented in that space. Now, if you have to make a career change where you're like, I do this job, I make this much money, and now I'm going to go all in and, and and try and make money in fitness, that way might be really tough because if working in a private box to scale your business up, that would be really, really tough for a lot of trainers to I, do. Yeah, I just definitely don't think it's a good idea to go right to virtual. 
I just I don't think that um, there's any sort of authority you're going to be able to generate without doing it in person and, you know, like really spending time working on all the little nuances like person to person first because if you don't understand that yeah. how are you ever going to be able to coach that uh where you don't see all the angles yeah the be the the best online coaches are ones that have worked with people in well, person for a long I, time i right. really like what our uh good friend mind pump listener long time mind pump listener one of our ogs uh, jonathan alva we've watched him do oh yeah right he is a he worked for 24th and i think he still is it still works for one of them but no, no, take that back. I know he's pivoted into his own business now, but this, I mean, he's been listening to Mind Pump for five years and he's slowly integrated Instagram and YouTube videos and he's been working he's got on a that. podcast now. Yeah, and a podcast, but he's been doing it while he was also working for a big box gym. Then right. he had established himself enough to then go private and do his own thing, all while dabbling in that. Instagram, obviously, I know doesn't generate a ton of revenue or any potential revenue probably for him right now, but he's acquiring real estate in the virtual world while also working in the real, you know, hands-on world mm -hmm. and starting to kind of scale in that direction. I really like that strategy. I like the idea of go get real hands-on experience in a, in a place you're going to get a lot of practice. Meanwhile, you're getting your hands in, you know, the you know, Instagram, the Facebook, the mm -hmm. YouTube, the podcasting, learning all those platforms, seeing where your voice is best heard. You know, maybe you're terrible on camera and podcast, but then you're a great blogger. You write really well. So I would be dabbling in all of those mm -hmm. uh, pieces of content, those different mediums, while also getting the the real life practice on, on people that way, because I, I think you're silly if you if you completely ignore virtual and you go all in on brick and mortar. It, it just it's a very weird time right now to be betting that you know fitness is not going to dramatically change or shift, you know, in the direction of this virtual. I think and I think Peloton and Mirrors and Tonals are all example. I think Mind Pump is an example of the the future of what like fitness is starting to look like, and it's it's definitely moving in this direction of digital streaming media. And so even though the, you need that hands-on practice like Justin's talking about, I think also making sure that you're starting to acquire real estate on those other mediums too. Excellent.